Have you ever wondered what a pesticide company with integrity looks like? Well, in this video, we're going to get into it. You're here with Mark Batwell on Perfect Gardens TV. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to hit the join button on the bottom of every video. Before I actually get into the product called Organic Shield, I actually want to talk about the story about how this product fell into my lap. A gentleman by the name of Nathan from Yellow Bottles contacted me on behalf of Holtz. Holtz, to my understanding, is the person that gives Yellow Bottles the rights to distribute the pesticide Organic Shield. He got a hold of me after the most recent release of the videos of Green Cleaner and talking about sodium lauryl sulfate and basically all the problems using surfactants like sodium lauryl sulfate. He reached out and said, hey, Mark, I really actually appreciate someone's finally calling companies out like this in the industry, and I'd really like to show you our product. Would it be okay with you I sent over the MSDS sheet along with all the additional testing on this product? Because everything I was talking about, this product was actually a solution. Obviously, being this industry already for about 10 years, I've heard it all. Although I'm not too jaded enough to try something new. So I reached out to one of the growers in the private membership, which you'll actually be hearing his testimony at the end of this video. So I highly recommend to stay to the end. And I asked Nathan to send him out a couple bottles for him to try out because one of our private member Joe was actually running through some spider mite issues. Like I said, we'll get into it at the end of this video. For now though, let's go ahead and get into the chemicals in this product and understand why Organic Shield specifically is on the pesticide approved perfect gardens list. For me, the biggest thing is to actually do my own research. If someone's going to go ahead and send me something, what I'm going to do is I want to go out, get on the internet, do everything from researching on Wikipedia, YouTube, get onto Internet Explorer, actually do research on a number of different levels. And I, what I like to do is I actually do a comparison of my own research with what the marketing is saying on their product, right? And do I have any cognitive dissonance realities? Is there any issues of just conflict with what the, what the internet is saying to what they are saying uh, on the marketing side of things. And here are just a few key points of what I want you to be aware of of the specific chemical that is in Organic Shield. The sucrose octanate esters, and I'm just going to call it SEO from this point forward to make it easy on myself, biodegrade rapidly and do not persist in the environment. And remember, all these notes I found on other third-party sites that have like patentoffices.org websites, stuff like that, that has nothing to do with the Organic Shield brand. I might also reference this as esters. If I say esters, this just stands for the SEO and it stands for the sucrose, the specific chemical that is found or and used in the Organic Shield pesticide product. The esters are not toxic to mammals and other non-target organisms. Organisms are already exposed because the sucrose esters are found in plants. And this is actually very interesting because I'm going to dive into this a little later, but just to be very clear, this pesticide actually naturally occurs in plants. I thought this was very interesting. I'll bring it up a little bit later. The tiny amounts used in pesticide products are not expected to substantially increase the amount of these esters in the environment. So what they're saying here specifically is what the amount of esters that they use in these pesticides are not going to throw everything out of balance when you use it on a commercial level. This is very important. Why? It's because think about all the all the salts that run off and cause dead spots in our oceans, right? Algae blooms. And that this is really important. When you use something to solve your problem, what other consequences are going to follow behind it? And that's a very embedded question that a lot of people don't even take a moment to consider. SEOs are water soluble, mixed best with cold water, sugar, starches, or powdered milk. This is really important because I'm going to get into this later. Remember how I've talked about how the sodium lauryl sulfate is a degreaser. And if you use other oils, it doesn't matter what it is, it's going to combine to our essential oils in the plant and it's going to dilute it or reduce the integrity of the product. The reason why this is being significant as being water soluble is, is because if it's water soluble, the plants can take it up actually and process it. That's the most significant thing to be aware of. SOE does not mix with oil. That's another thing. SEOs don't mix with your essential oils at all. They, they actually repel each other. So it's going to be very interesting when you realize how when you're using this pesticide, it's actually not going to dilute or merge with your essential oils on your plant. So you don't have to worry about losing the quality of your end product. SEOs, this insecticidal product of sucrose esters act by dissolving the waxy protective coating of targeted pests, causing them to dry out and die. SEOs are manufactured from sucrose, table sugar, and are a tonic acid ester commonly found in plants and animals. 
So this is another thing I really like about this pesticide. They're, they're using something that plants produce as a natural pesticide. That's what I find to be fascinating to then once again solve some of our own problems. That's why in many levels I'm okay with essential oils, but in some level I do know that those essential oils, when you spray them on there, do combine to your oils because they're both oils. So there's always a pro or con, but up until this product, I've never known of another pesticide that actually does not mix with the oils or you don't need an oil or, or this specific emulsifier doesn't degrease the oil specifically actually on the plants. Most surfactants and emulsifiers are normally fat soluble like sodium lauryl sulfate versus this one, it's water soluble. SEOs were first isolated when researchers investigated the insecticidal properties of the tobacco leaf hairs. This insecticidal property of SEOs acts by dissolving the waxy protective coating of a targeted pest, causing them to dry out and die. They actually just don't dissolve the waxy layer, but they actually act as a suffocant, so they'll suffocate the bugs as well. SEOs marketed by biopesticides are intended to, to mimic the pest control properties of basically the nicotine plant. SEOs have been found on wild tomatoes and wild potatoes species. This is actually very interesting to me as well because we're always talking about microbiology and the different types of microbiology in our environment and the different types of microbiology actually constantly evolving as the plants are growing. So could our plants actually create their own SEO if grown in nature? According to the commercial manufacturers of SEO, it is not possible to extract the naturally occurring sugars, esters, in sufficient quantities to be commercially available. So for producing SEOs, there's actually a patent. I'll, I'll cover it a little bit later. SEOs occur naturally in some plants as a result of normal plant metabolism functions. The extraction process that occurs in nature has not been documented, but it is not the same as the commercial manufacturing process, which initials the use of sulfuric acid and metal carbonate catalyst filtration, transectification, refluxing, vacuum, and fractional distillation, decanting, and centrifugation. Which, all these things, in the next year or so, I'm going to be getting into these things and showing you how to get into commercial extraction using ethanol and other commercial grade extraction equipment. Make sure to stay tuned, subscribe, and hit the notification button. In addition, SEO biodegrades approximately in five days, roughly at room temperature, in both the anaerobic and anaerobic conditions. Again, once again, I found that to be incredibly interesting. So this right here is just the patent process. You can look it up by just typing in US 57567168A. When I ended up reviewing the information that Nathan and Holtz sent over to me, I was actually really impressed because every single thing I researched was exactly the same from their marketing material to what third party companies or websites were saying about the chemical. And I'm just going to read a few things right here. Almost all of the current insecticides being used in our industry today were used and designed for the use of ornamental crops, not plants that we would smoke or consume by humans. Almost all organic insecticides in our industry today are oil-based suffocants, normally needing a minimum of 48 days before they are off the plant. And once again, they're not actually off the plant. They're just in many situations combining with the essential oils we want off those plants. Many insecticides contain unwanted bacteria. Oil containing products cannot be applied during the day. Not to mention that the oil does not mix well with water. So very often you're going to get an inconsistent spray throughout your entire grow room. Obviously having to spray more often than you would causing other problems later down the road. One thing I thought was really interesting I never really thought about was the predatory insects poop. I mean, do you really want poop on your plants? And because the, this industry is being forced to test microbials now, this poop could become a problem later down the road. This product will not show up in testing. Why? Is because after five days, it turns into water, sucrose, fatty acids, and CO2, which when you think about it, the CO2 can actually be beneficial to your plants. One of the things I actually really like about this company when they when I see it in their product taglines is say, our triple P guaranteed. When used as directed, our product is people, plant, and planet safe. After doing all my own research and after reviewing all of their marketing material, I do have to agree, this product is a product I would highly recommend you have on your shelf. 
at all times for a pesticide or insecticide product. Let's go ahead and get on a call with one of our members here at Perfect Gardens that we grow coach on a daily basis and see how his plants are doing and his overall testimony on the product Organic Shield. Hey brother, how you doing? I just kind of wanted to get your experience overall with Organic Shield. What did you think about it overall? And can you talk to me about what problems you're having in your growing for a few minutes this season? Right. Um, so basically, I got these plants from a dispensary here, local um, medical place, and uh, they were sick right off the get go. I mean, purple stems and, and whatever. Are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm listening. Anyway, uh, yeah. And um, I never really knew until you told me that it was probably spider mites and uh, I verified it with scope and yep, bad. It was a bad infestation. I tried using uh, peroxide, but the uh, peroxide, well, it did its job, but it did start scorching and burning leaves and things. And I didn't want to do that in flower. And um, I was afraid to, you know, continue on respraying, just damaging the plant. And then you found Organic Shield and I tried it. And uh, I'll tell you, it's it's been an awesome thing. I mean, it it kills everything. It, the, the mites are gone. Nearly every egg is gone. It just, you know, it looks like the leaves are like dirty or something. But, you know, I'm not going to sit there and clean off every leaf, I think, unless I really have to. No, the Organic Shield has been awesome. It's been, it, it just sprayed it and they were gone. Uh, I followed the directions and waited 48 hours or 24 hours, whatever it was, one day. And then resprayed them with Organic Shield, 80 ml uh, dilution per gallon. And, uh... And that's been awesome. Uh, right now, I'm on a once a week um, 40 ml solution per gallon. And um, I like Organic Shield. It seems to be working great. I'm hoping it's organic. It's safe all the way through flower and it's not going to harm anybody. And uh, the only thing I can say is it does have a weird smell for about 48 hours, 72 hours after you spray. But I suppose that's what it's supposed to do. It's, it's sort of, uh, gosh, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it's, it's a little bit. Um, like a pesticide. But anyway, it does dissipate, goes away. Don't smell it at all. You can smell the buds really nice. It smells sweet. And yeah, that odor is gone. All right, brother. I appreciate you so much for your testimonial. It's Would you say we did our due diligence before actually getting to a point where we could give our testimonial on this? Absolutely. Like I said, I'm on week five, day one and uh of flower and um shoot i only have three more weeks of you know every other week or every week just just hit them with 40 percent solution uh just to make sure they don't come back yeah they're looking great they're thriving they're starting to pop they're looking good uh as far as i'm concerned i mean you know i think the blooms could be bigger and better at this point yes but uh that's a light issue and i will correct that on the next grow i just gotta buy a light I really appreciate this conversation today. You know, it's uh, it's really important for us to operate in line uh, with the core values of Perfect Gardens and um, really just doing our due diligence for you guys before, you know, hey, go buy this product, you know, and releasing that to 35,000 people or more. I just don't want to be that store. And you're part of the membership, right? Yes, sir. What do you think about it so far? Oh, I love it. You know, I mean, I get on there and... For the most part, everybody's really great and uh, loves to share uh, a wealth of information in there. So uh, you would say you so people are conversing and there's activity and we're and we actually are kind of performing as a as a community in some level in the back scenes. Absolutely. I believe so. Yes. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you so much, uh, guys. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Have a great grow. That's another great point, right? Why do you think he froze it? Was it uh, their greed? I know that one. We talked about that one. But why else? Bad, maybe bad uh, information? Bad? Uh, someone told him to do it for yeah. processing or it's something? Been, it's because what happens is the guys don't want to wring out the most water because they're losing weight. 